So, Clash Arena. What? Well, I guess I should start in the beginning. In the beginning, there are two characters. And more than likely, they pressed a button and they hit at the same time. And a clash was created. Now, there are effectively two ways. There's probably another one I'm not thinking of. But for the most part, there's two ways clashes happen in this game. The basic way, which I show you, which is when two... Uh, two attack, uh, two hitboxes. That's the word I'm looking for. Hitbox. Two hitboxes that can clash touch each other. Like so. Alright. Uh, this is the obvious one. Oh, uh, that's the one I didn't want to show you. Hold on. I'm trying to work this together with my fingers. Uh, uh yeah. The two attacks. That can clash, hit at the same time, clash, so on and so forth. Uh, the second one, which I showed you real quick by accident, is... Oh, not that. I need to do it later. Yeah. Alright. My paw's messed up. If an attack has clash frames on startup i wouldn't be surprised if something has like clash frames on recovery and i just not thinking about it. but there are a good number of attacks that have clash frames on startup that's another way a clash can happen when a move that can clash hits a clash frame all right uh I guess the most common way you'd actually see this is here. If you oh, time out. Pick your favorite pause music. I tend to like battle Anyways, the probably most common way you'll see clashing in this game comes from if somebody wants to guard cancel forward. All right. So, what happens, or what can you do when you clash? Because that's something that gets talked about very often in this game, and everybody always uh, surrounds it with, it's not straightforward, it's not... Uh, it's kind of an advanced thing or some people flat out say it is an advanced thing so on and so forth which it kind of is when you see everything that goes around it. so a real simple guideline is you need to realize if you are clashing on the ground uh, I think this is, wait how do I do? yeah just work with me here real quick talk card you need to know if you're clashing on the ground. That's good enough. Or, or, or in the air. All right. Uh, let's start with on the ground. When you clash on the ground, when you clash on the ground, <laughs> you can do effectively anything that you will probably think of except for whatever you started to clash with so with dark heart one sec so with dark heart i am pressing 5b clashing with my uh, my, my demo dark heart 5b and we clash we we're both clashing with the hitboxes coming out not the clash range before so that means if we clash i could hit 5A, I could hit, uh, I could hit, uh, I could hit, I don't actually don't know why that's happening, I'm kind of curious now, hold on, oh, huh,
So what I think this winds up meaning is either the Clash Hurt Box or the Clash Box, Clash Box, is kind of like on her chair. Basically, when they kick, I think they're reaching past each other and, or reaching past the Clash Box and hitting the Hit Box. That's what's happening. That's like the short summary I have in my head. The short analysis I have my head. Anyway, uh, back to the actual demo itself. So when you clash on the ground, you can do pretty much anything you would think of except for what you started the clash with. So I did 5A, 2A. So I could do 2B. I could do 5C. I could do 2... Uh, that's 2E, actually. I could do... I could do... I could do... I could do... There you go. Uh, but like I said, you can do pretty much what comes to your mind. So, aside from buttons, which I didn't hit... Help. Help. Oh, this isn't like one-to-one. -one. Let's try that. There we go. I could hit 5E, I could hit 2E, but I said anything, not any attack. So that also includes more to try to home out of it, or forward home, or neutral home. Uh, so hitting buttons, you wanted to, it, uh, if you wanted to activate, and it would be extend force or an extend force cancel rather than uh, neutral activation because you're canceling an attack. Uh, you could, if you really wanted to, you could burst. You don't want to do that. You probably don't want to do that. Uh, but again, I said things. So some of the important things that I haven't mentioned yet. You could backdash. You could forward dash. That one's not so important. You can jump. That's kind of important. Ah. Ah. Help. Help. I'm too close. You can super jump. That one's fucking important as hell. <laughs> That's one of the most important ones. Um, trying to think if there's anything I didn't cover. Uh, I mean, for the sake of showing it, you can indeed do specials. You can do supers. Uh, you can do Arcana supers, Arcana moves, uh, if you have the criteria, you can do critical hearts, if you're in extend force, you can blaze, uh, but the important thing to piece from this is the one button that I didn't hit. You can't do the same thing that you did. Alright. So, can you do regular special moves? Yes. You can, pretty much anything you think of, except for the move you did it with, you can do that. Uh, and this is on the ground. I guess I'll show you this real quick because this will cover this too. Uh, how do I do this? Let's try, let's try this. Give me a second. Alright, I'm cheating. I'm doing this the other way. Right there, all right. If you are in the air and you are clashing, you can actually, I guess I need to show it with something like that. Uh, uh, kind of. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see it real quick. If you clash in the air, you can use the same thing again. So what could happen, which I'd have to maybe get another character. I don't feel like sitting down. Like, if you clash with somebody in the air and you're right in their face, 
<laughs> you can hit JA, which is a very common thing to do. Uh, one of the common things you do when you clash is you just hit your fastest button, and you hope it's faster than theirs because you probably don't know if it's faster than theirs. Uh, and if they happen to have the same frame button as you, they uh, they clash with you because you both hit them at the same time, and then you keep doing it again in the air because uh, y'all don't know any better. I really want to do this. What if I did? Hey. But I need you to jump, though. No. Alright, I gave up. I quit. Anyways, so, when you clash, uh, like I said, uh, typically one of the things that should cross your mind is... Is, close, is hitting your fastest button. All right, that's kind of funny how that panned out. Let me see if I can do this again. Ah, that that's really convenient right now. So what's happening here? No, not that one. I'm doing. No, I need. There's my pause button. All right. All right. So, we're clashing, right? And like I said, one of the common things to do when you clash is to hit your fastest button. I think this is actually going to work because I'm clashing with the hurt bo hitbox. Hitbox, hitbox, hitbox. Uh, help me out of this. Yeah, alright. So, what I'm looking for is that one. Yeah. So, it's hard to do this in pause. Let me do it like this. Uh, too close now. Alright, so... Th this is actually a lot further down than what I wanted to show you. Or even tell you right now. But this is just kind of funny that this conveniently worked out. This is the <laughs> kinds of things that can happen with clashing in this game. So... I said there are a couple ways you can clash, and it's kind of hard to see because of where I have it paused, but I am clashing with the startup clash frames of the dummy, right? Uh, so what's been happening is if I try to hit my fastest button right here, the, uh, the dummy doesn't have any other inputs, so it's going to continue doing 5B, right? Since the attack of 5B, since the active frames of 5B didn't happen yet, they're still going to happen. It's not like clashing negates active frames that have not happened. I know that's a little wordy and a little weird, but it makes sense if you think about it. Clashing with the startup, the active frames and the recovery still has to happen. So if I try to hit my fastest button... We clash again, but this time I hit 5A and it just so happens that the timing of hitting 5A will clash with the active frames of 5B. So there are effectively two different clashes happening, but they're two different, uh, they're happening for two different reasons. All right. So... As the clash, the, the clasher, yeah, the clasher, I guess, as the, the dummy, uh, this is a thing to consider doing. Like, just because you clash, if you can recognize what you clash with, like the startup frames, sometimes it's okay to just let it go. Uh, sometimes you might want to do something else. But like in this matchup specifically, if, uh, if you see that you're clashing with uh with your startup frames and you don't expect them to do something like uh uh like oh no that's right i have to do uh where is this one, that one? yeah so that one's unclashable i think and that's not unclassable 
That just has the timing where that works. But you want to mash? This is what happens when you mash, cool see. In this scenario. Oh, I just flat out lost that time. That's what happens. You can't mash. You can't mash. Uh, you're not going to do 2A because you're 2A slower than her 5A. See the class with the startups and you want a 4D. Then can you 4D around it? Yes, you can. Uh, you're hoping you can actually get around it. Uh, like so, but yes, you can. That's actually a pretty smart thing to do. Uh, here is a, an Arcana Heart 3 thing to know. All right. The one thing that I said was... Uh, stop. Pause. Cool. See what up. <laughs> Before I get too far down this rabbit hole. Cool C McGee. What's good? Uh, yeah, forwarding around is a very viable thing to do. Although you have to realize, or you have to understand. And this is the playing and experience thing. Is you can't just 4D and expect it to work. Th this is part of the... The, the part of fighting games you have to get to. Like, just universally, right? You can't just do this. Like, this isn't just automatic. Because, uh... Something like... Something like this could happen. Something like that could happen, right? And you can't see the 5C coming. Because you're 4 ding from the class. So you would have to know if said Dark Heart player does stuff like that. Or like is even acknowledging the clash. Uh, the ranges for this. Uh, the ra uh, nah, you can't do that. <laughs> if you can do it or not. The point I'm getting at is, yes you can. And it's actually a good thing to do. But it's not automatic. But this leads me to what I was going to say. Why it's important to know what all happens about this right here, which is super jump. So, there's a really cool defensive thing about super jump. Which is why super jumping is really important in this game. And you will generally super jump more than you will regular jump, right? So, uh... Like I said earlier, you can do pretty much anything out of this, right? Uh, oh. There you go. I guess you could jump out of this specifically. But, mm, let me do... Let me do this. Uh, you weren't supposed to see that part. You weren't supposed to see that either because that's too many. Uh, I might need to do like that. Yeah, can I jump out of this? Nope. So, I can't jump out of this because uh, jumps have startup. And jumps have a lot of startup in this game. And when I say a lot of startup, I'm, I still think that this game probably has the most pre-jump frames out of, like, all the games. If not, it's, like, a lot. All right. You thought they couldn't cancel their startup clash. Why not? They're clashing. And they're on the ground. So the only thing you can't do when you clash, for the most part, is the same move you started to clash with. You can cancel into something else. And if they're going to clash with you, you can cancel the startup into something else. That It's different. Uh, so what's different about it is... You're clashing with the startup frames as opposed to the actual attack. I didn't say you couldn't cancel that. I just said they're clash frames at a different point. This is starting to get into why it's, it actually is an advanced thing in clash. You can cancel. Uh, you can cancel. That's not the good one. That's too late. You can cancel both the startup and when. Uh, Two uh, two attack frames hit each uh, two hitboxes hit each other clash with each other. Those are both clashes. The only thing you can't do is you can't like 
do the same move again. And what I mean do the same move again is like, to give you a clear example, say we both do 5B. I can't do the 5B again, no matter what. Even if I do this with the startup frames. That's not the startup frame. I can't do the 5B again. I can let the 5B finish because in this scenario... Ah, I even missed the start button. Go me. Start button on here is weird. Oh, I need to pause a little bit later. That's good. I can let this attack finish because the entire animation has not happened. The active frames have not happened yet. Therefore, they will happen. But I can't uh, start this attack again, which would then give me the startup class frames again. If you were to swing into it. You see what I'm saying? So like I, I the only thing that you would probably think of that you cannot do here is you can't 5B again. There's actually two other things you can't do that I haven't told you yet. All right. And I need to tell you one of them to explain what I'm getting at. All right. So I need to forgot the important. All right. So I told you you can't do the move again. That's thing number one. Thing number two, which is going to seem like a lie in a second, um, especially since we're doing... You still have this, like, baked in. Right? Help. Help. Yeah, all right. So thing number two. Say I'm, I'm, I know you're going to react to this clash, and I know you're going to 2A, and I know I can't uh, jump away from it. What is a reasonable thing to do? Well, what if I wanted a block, right? You can't block from a clash. All right? That's thing number two that you can't do. You can't block from a clash. All right? Thing number three is if you're standing, you're still in an animation so you can't crouch. That's also why you can't block. Because uh, you kind of need to be in neutral to block. All right, well, let's go back to this blocking thing. You can't block from a clash, right? You can't block from a clash, right? Uh, too close. You can't block from a clash. You can't block from a clash. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. You cannot block from a clash in this game. Uh... You can't block from a clash. But what you can do, I have to double check this, make sure I'm not crazy. I know I know this, but I want to check this because I didn't feel like I was doing I guess I was doing this. All right. You can't block from a clash. But what you can do from a clash is you can super jump. All right. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. You can super jump from a clash. All right. And in this game, during uh, super jump, pre-jump frames, which are more than jump frames normally, I think universally as well. We're just going to say normally to cover my bases. And the super jump frame, uh, pre-jump frames. So before you uh, mechanically are off the ground, you're still on the ground. During the pre-jump frames, you can block. All right, and you can block low if you're holding down back. Ah, that's a bad one. That didn't happen. Help. That was bad. Yeah, like you can literally see. Where's pause button? There's pause button. Ah. You can see the super jump poof, whatever, before I leave. But you can clearly see me blocking the 5B. Which, if you add all that together, means that I super jumped. But during the pre-jump frames, before I left the ground, I'm blocking. Greetings, citizens. What's good? So, <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah? <laughs> so, input 2, 7, 8. You can do 9. 2, whatever. And then 1 really quick. Yeah. Uh, realistically, if you think about it. Unless you're doing something specific, 
this should kind of be an instinct anyways. Not so much in this game, because it has drifting. But, like, if, if there were no drifting, like normal jumping, it should already be instinct for you to jump and hold, like, down, back, or back at the least. In the event that you weren't going to do something, or you were going to be late, and you were expecting to air block. Like, why would you not? Right? You just tie that to a super jump in this game. So, yes, what that means is... I am not telling the story. I'm not lying when I say... Ah, help. You cannot block from Clash. You cannot block from Clash. The super jump show you from here from super jump and from the super jump pre-jump frames you can block ah i was holding down for it but you cannot block from clash those are pretty much the highlights of what you need to know there's like a lot more like theory concept and application that goes behind it but unless there's something i'm not thinking of unless there's something i'm not thinking of those are i'm pretty sure those are all the mechanics you need to know behind it except for something that i Glossed over, but I will show you very blatantly. So I have a lightning arc. And in lightning, if you are holding 5E or 2E, you are in a clash state. Right? Uh, I'm only telling you this so that you understand that I have like a really easy thing to show you clash. Because I said clashes happen uh, when, when when clash frames are met with uh, attack that can clash. All right. I hope I remember my notes. Yeah. Uh, the point I'm making is that uh, there are unclashable attacks. I can't remember. If, somebody probably has some normals that I can't think of. But there are a good amount of unclashable attacks. And they're the kind of things where if, if somebody's like looking to do this, you want to keep it on your mind. You're not going to just like throw it out whenever, but you're going to like kind of target this to a degree. It's more of a down road thing. The lightning thing, you couldn't get the special DP. Oh, wait. I need a clashable attack. Give me that one. When you are in a clash state, if you enter a DP, uh, DPE, when in Thunder, you do, everybody calls it a DP. Technically speaking, it's not, but you're invincible. <laughs> so it technically is. Doesn't have to be in EF, although, oh. although, help. Oh. I don't really use this for the clash. Help? Uh, is it just oh, I forget. Ah, it's just block. That would make more sense. I don't know if you can do it from block. Huh. I don't know. But anywhere except for that. Yeah, like, it's... This is a totally viable thing to uh, to activate Extend Force just to block and class something. I don't know if you've ever been able to do the DP from that. Uh, I've never thought to do that, but I don't I don't use the EF like that, so I would have never thought of that. I probably would have assumed it somewhere and died for it at some point. But yeah, I would have never thought of that. Oh, uh, that's bad input. It's also bad input. Hello, help. I think. Uh, just say this. 
Uh, L. S. During during an attack intersect. So you specifically have to be uh doing an attack. By the way, clashing is mechanically called intersect in this game. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. I wouldn't be surprised if like 99% of the people don't know that, but yeah. Uh, specifically says during an attack clash. Don't worry, I wouldn't fault you for that either. <laughs> but I have it cliff noted as a clash. That's, a, that's some good things to know. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to tell you about clashing. I don't think. I do not believe so. Uh, are there any any questions, comments, or concerns as of now? I know I didn't tell you to come in with like a question sheet, but if you happen to have anything off of the top of the dome piece, let me have it. Hey, the frames were still low. That was everything? All right. Yeah. Um... Nothing clash. It doesn't have to be clash related. Actually. Like literally anything. Uh, just to give you a quick example that I have off the top of my head, why clashing or having clash frames isn't specifically a bad thing. What do I do for this? Uh, where's the ender? I just did the whole thing, right? Yeah. Uh, not one hit. Negative. Negative. Is there something I need to work on? So this is what I... I don't know if I put this video up yet. I don't think I have. Anyways, so here's the setup. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, hold on. Turn tech off. Doesn't really matter too much. Pow. I have the setup. Say I want to try to DP out of this setup right here. Oh, that one's supposed to happen. I can't remember if he has a DP that does not Alright, uh, so there's some point in time I'm going to get this way. There we go, right? So, in that scenario, let me do this again. This is really hard to time the fire, but we'll try. In this scenario, I don't clash with the dice, right? Therefore, I'm whiffing a DP. I can't cancel this because I didn't make contact. Therefore, I can't cancel. I can't homing cancel this. And even if I wanted to extend force cancel, I don't know if you can EF this when you hit the ground. You have to hit the ground. So until I hit the ground, I can be punished for this. And let me check. <laughs> Yeah, it's until you hit the ground, because it recovers on the ground. Funny enough. Does it recover on the ground? 
Yeah, it recovers on the ground. I just had to make sure it didn't do anything crazy like recovering yet. All right, so in that scenario, until I hit the ground, I can be punished, which is going to be terrible in that scenario. What? Oh, I guess the other thing that I didn't mention, and I'm going to have to restart this again. I did an invincible DP. Fully invincible DP. All right. Mm. That because you can't have a lucky hit for that. But if I clash, I should be able to jump out of that. Maybe not for the DP. Help! Why can I not? Let me think about this. Does she not get her air actions from that? Huh. Maybe she doesn't get her air actions back from that. But, like, um... Normally when you clash with something, you can do something afterwards, so... Like I just did, you could hold out of it. It wouldn't be the greatest there, but you could. Could technically double DP. But since she's in the air, she could actually be able to DP a kid. If I could time it correctly! Help, I'm bad. Nine, two dice at a time. Oh, alright, well. That's not what I wanted, but that also works. <laughs> Get in there. Oh, you can't have lucky here. Actually, I think you have lucky on that. Alright, I quit. But you get the idea. You get the idea. That's something to consider. Uh, sometimes it is good to have class friends. Yeah. Yeah, you can't have it. A lucky hit for that? Because it jacks up the time. And that is one reason why luck okay. But I would kind of assume if you can do something similar time. You'd much rather use time. And then no We're still missing the end of this. What because that is unclashable. That is unclashable.